So how do we define bacteria? Bacteria are single-celled microorganisms which can exist either as independent organisms or as parasites, meaning dependent upon another organism for life. Bacteria are roughly about 0.5 to 2 micrometers in size, which means we can only see bacterial cells through the microscope. Other than the microscope, bacteria form what we call colonies, which have millions of cells which allow us to easily see bacteria in a medium that is grown in the lab, known as agar plates. This is the simplest method used in order to identify and see bacteria. We use this method to count how many bacteria are present in, for example, a swab of a cutting board. Greater than 300 colonies is considered dirty and contaminated. Bacteria were one of the very first organisms to exist on our planet, and they are notably old and have coexisted with humans since the beginning. There are millions of different types of bacteria, some good for you, and some very dangerous to your health. So where can we find bacteria? Bacteria live in soil, water, and in plants and animals. Bacteria are so prominent on Earth that they also live in some of the most extreme environments, such as the deep ocean, hot springs, and there is even evidence that bacteria lived on Mars. As an example, bacteria on a human-associated level grow in your gut, on your skin, and in your hair, including your eyelashes. So much so that recent research has shown that the makeup of the different types of bacteria in your gut and as well as on your skin are more unique than a fingerprint. Bacteria also grows and survives in the food that we eat. Raw meat and vegetables by design must be cooked so that we as humans can consume these foods without getting sick from the bacteria that thrive in these environments. There are two main distinctions for bacteria which we define as gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. We use this definition to group the various types of bacteria by how they look and behave. All commonly occurring bacteria fall under these two categories. Suffice to say we identify bacteria in the lab with a simple test that we use as a broad category to determine which bacteria we are looking at. This test is known as a gram stain. This means that there are two main types of bacteria that look and behave differently from each other. With this method, we are able to see bacteria under the microscope. This test also helps us see the shape of bacteria. There are three main shapes, bacilli, cocci, and spirilla. So what do bacteria need to survive? There are six elements in the environment that allow bacteria to grow and survive. Temperature, moisture content, pH, nutrient content, oxygen, and time. In general, with bacteria there are always exceptions, we see that bacteria can survive in a very large temperature range. Bacteria can live between 0 to 60 degrees Celsius, however on a human associated level they grow at their best between 20 to 45 degrees Celsius. This is because the bacteria that we are concerned with have adapted to our total bodies in order to infect and contaminate us. Therefore the absolute best temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. Bacteria can grow mostly in moisture rich environments. In food, bacteria love moisture rich conditions. Water activity means how much water is available in a food product. Such an example would be cucumbers. There is a high availability of water in cucumbers, lettuce and celery at 95%. When compared to dried spices between 5 and 50%, most bacteria need at least 80% of water to survive. As we as humans need nutrients to survive, so do bacteria. With nutrient high content, food is a perfect source of nutrients for bacteria to grow, which is why we need very good hygiene standards in the kitchen. Food is an ideal environment for bacteria. The skin of humans and animals is also a perfect example of a high nutrient content source for bacteria. Bacteria require sources of carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus and iron and a large number of other minerals. The pH and acidity level also affects how bacteria grow and how effectively bacteria can survive within the environment. Bacteria in food ranges from a pH of 5 to 8. This means items such as vinegar are unlikely to have bacteria survive. Lemons are always a popular food when antibacterial properties are mentioned. Indeed, the pH does discourage the growth of bacteria, but is not a major factor when killing bacteria that occurs from cross-contamination. Meats, spinach and milk are within the ideal pH range for bacteria. Yogurt has a pH just below the ideal range and is generally considered less risky than milk because of this. Bacteria can grow in both oxygen-rich and poor environments. This means sealed and unsealed products and therefore vacuum-packed meals and foods are not free from concern. This also means exposing foods to the environment and leaving foods uncovered allows bacteria to grow. The longer bacteria are exposed to the above factors in their ideal conditions, the more established the bacterial cells become. These factors are all dependent on time and bacteria can rapidly multiply within 15 to 45 minutes. 
as you can see, bacteria are similar to humans in what they need to survive. Hence, there are human-associated bacteria, and as a result, bacteria that occur in the foods that we consume. Under ideal conditions, it can take 15 to 45 minutes for bacteria to rapidly multiply, meaning 1,000 bacterial cells can multiply into 100,000 bacterial cells within 45 minutes to 1 billion cells within 2 hours. Food starts to expire when reaching a range of millions of bacteria. There are two different types of bacteria involved in food. The first type of bacteria involved with food are known as food spoilage bacteria, and the second is known as food poisoning or pathogenic bacteria. Food spoilage bacteria are types of bacteria easily detectable as they make the food go off, in other words, rain certification. We are able to see it, taste it, and more commonly able to smell it. These act as warning signs to say, do not eat this. They are generally not dangerous to your health, but certainly should not be consumed. These also require very high numbers of colonies to be consumed in order to cause illness. Pathogenic bacteria are types of bacteria involved with food that need very small amounts of bacterial colonies to be able to make you sick. These are the bacteria that we are most concerned with, as you cannot see it, taste it, or smell these bacteria. There are no indications that these bacteria are present in your food. Within this broad category, there are specific bacteria that we are concerned with within the kitchen environment. This applies to both the home kitchen and a production kitchen such as a restaurant, hotel, and food service.